Hi, I'm Rabbi Ruth Abush Magdur, the Director of Education at B'chol Lashon, globaljews.org. We are excited to be here with you today, um, just on the eve of Passover 2020, where we're all sheltering in place and keeping ourselves safe. It's a strange year and things are changing, but we are all here with someone who is no stranger to change or to tradition. Gila Sanders is a Jew from Italy who lives here in Atlanta, and we are excited to talk with her and to learn about her family traditions, her family history, and how she and her family are adapting to Passover this year. So it's a unique community because it's a community that predates the um, the diaspora before um, before the expulsion of the Jews from uh, from Israel to the diaspora. And so this is yeah. one of the oldest Jewish communities in the world. Right. So the, uh, the story goes that the first delegation of Jews came to Rome um, during the Maccabee time. They were looking for allies um, at the time. And so a group came to Rome and some of them liked what they saw. It was, uh, um, it was a really nice place and, and growing at the time. And so, um, so a few of the delegates that came looking for allies decided to relocate there. Um, at 22 centuries ago. And so, and since then, there's always been a presence. Um, as a matter of fact, there's uh, the, the very first synagogue in Rome is in this neighborhood called Trastevere. It's no longer a synagogue, it's a restaurant, or at least it was a restaurant up until uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but you can see it from the outside, and it's, uh, it's just a very special thing to know that you can walk there and see um, you know, where, where the first Jewish community started and where, where they gathered. And, uh, and my family has been there for a very, very long time. So we, we go back many, many generations. Um, at the very least, um, around the time of the Spanish Inquisition, I have some relatives who came from Spain after 1492, um, but some parts of my family trace back even farther from that. So, so it's been a long time. So Having grown up in Italy and in Rome is, we're, you know, we're going to talk today about Passover. And now you've lived in the United States for a long time. Um, is there a really big difference between Passover in Italy and Passover in Rome? Um, yes, in my experience, yes. I will, I will say, you know, every experience is different and I'm sure there are some commonalities between some of the seders that, you know, go on um, in the United States and what I experienced growing up. Um, so there are some, so first of all, the, the Jewish community of Rome is considered an Orthodox community, is very much a traditional community. Um, and so, the, the liturgy is very important, and as a matter of fact, that is one of the things that, that we feel like we brought back from, um, from Israel way back when. And so, you know, if you hear some of the tunes, they're not, they're not Sephardic tunes, and they're not Ashkenazic tunes, they're Italian tunes, and they're, they're said to trace back all the way to Israel. Um, and, uh, and so there's a, there's a lot of tradition in, in Rome and in Italy in general. Um, in Rome, of course, there's also a lot of food associated with, um, with most of the holidays and, and also with life in general. So a lot of the foods that we eat during Passover take into consideration the type of ingredients that you find in Italy. Uh, with some modifications, we always ate uh, rice, for example. Um, so so the, the Seder is a big production, um, a lot of times involving many families that come together. We always have the tradition that the first night you're with your family, the second night you can go with your friends. Um, and so we grew up, I grew up having this very large Seder at my parents' house with roughly 40 people. And then the second wow. night, um, was either, you know, through the school, I went to a Jewish day school, so for many years we had Seder with, with my classmates, and then I was part of a youth group, and we had Seder with them, and then eventually grew up and had Seder with friends, but generally speaking, uh, it always goes like that. The first night you were family, the second night you decide what to do. Um, so growing up, we had, we had assigned parts, um, and in fact, I'll tell you more about what the plan is for tomorrow, but that continues on, that tradition continues on. And um, 
And so at school, we learned a lot of the pieces in the Haggadah and we were given certain parts. And so that rolled over during the Seder at home too. So um, if you wanted to take you know, somewhat of the easy route, you could just do the ones that you learned at school <laughs> for the second night and repeat that for the first. Um, the, the Haggadah is in, of course, in Hebrew and Italian, but for the most part, we read the whole thing in Hebrew. There are just very few pieces that are read in Italian. Um, yeah. saying, Wait, I hear that you have a copy of your Haggadah with you, right? Oh, I do, yes. Um, so let's see, is there any particular page that you would like to see? So this is a page um, that shows how the Seder plate is made. Mm -hmm. And I can bring it a little bit closer and you will see, you will notice some differences. Um, the, the biggest one is the maror is lettuce, um, which I will say I really appreciate. Um, and then uh, let's see some of the other way we did. We always have the, the shank bone and growing up, we actually had, um, we, we had the hoof of a, um, of a lamb on our setter plate, which was really a basket. And, um, and, and this is something that I will share with, with you that I usually don't talk about a whole lot, but uh, my task when I was little was to wash it and, um, and blow dry it too and get it all you know, nice and clean. <laughs> um, so yes, it, it was, it's a very bizarre memory, but I do remember <laughs> very clearly that we had to prepare the, the, the big basket and we had this hoof of, of a lamb in there. And then, and then there's, you know, pages like these with, um, you know, some illustrations and the text. Mm -hmm. And I do have a few. So this particular Haggadah, I believe, was my son's. And if you see on the margins, you will see that there's some notes of the, it says 3A, which was his class. Mm -hmm. so third grade and his class was class number A. And, uh, and so those were, the, those were the pieces that were assigned um, for him and that he learned to then repeat at the Seder with the family. That's amazing. So, um... I'm just, uh, we're doing, we're, we're, we're working on our troubleshooting, our, our, uh, um, we're troubleshooting some of our technical sides. So that's, um, one of the, some of the things that you're hearing in the background, I apologize. Um, so it sounds like a really amazing, like set of memories. One of the things that strikes me when you're talking about the fact that you're, family like you remember blow drying this when you were a kid it's a reminder that like even the things that we do with our kids when they're little some of these things that are strange end up becoming part of our family memory part of our personal memory they're the ways in which we we connect you were doing this and it's kind of easy to imagine a child not the blow dryer 2000 years ago but like to imagine that being part of something that's an unbroken chain all through time what is interesting then is like what you're going to do this year because this year the chain is definitely broken there's not it's not easy right like there's no you can't do the same thing you've always done right. so tell me a little bit about your plans for this year so this year we're actually going to try um to try to get together digitally um which has some very good things and some difficulties of course i'm gonna start with the good things which are that you know we live in the united states and um, my memories of doing the seder with my family and extended family unfortunately um, lie in the past because since we moved here we haven't really been able to have that shared experience in italy they're six hours ahead and so by the time we're ready to do our Seder, usually they're done. Um, so, you know, we exchange text messages and, you know, I, there's a lot of nostalgia going and, and I always miss it a lot because it was just such an important part of um, not just growing up, but my life in general. And a lot of the people who gather are very important to me. Um, but this year, uh, because of uh, the quarantine and the fact that we're all at home, we're actually going to be able to adjust our time. And so for us, it's going to be 2 p.m., but, you know, 
we're gonna start our setter early and for them it's 8 p.m. which is regular time for Italy um, and so we're gonna try to do a virtual setter with a lot of different families connecting at the same time uh, we did test it out and I think I was sharing with you that we are opting not to go zoom but to Skype in because some of the elders have that application already on their phones um, there's some challenges. The test that we did on Sunday was incredibly chaotic, so we will see how it plays out. But um, I think in the end, we're, we're all very excited to be able at least to have a little bit of togetherness um, tomorrow. And, and so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But it will also be an occasion for my kids to participate again in an Italian theater. We, um, my husband and I moved there with our children uh, in 2008, and we were in Italy for three years with them. And so they did have that experience while we were living there for those three years but since we got back um so since 2012 we've been doing our, our own thing and uh and it's very different than you know than what we experience in italy so this will be again an occasion for them to be with all of their cousins and my father and you know aunts and uncles and and participate all together well i know um covid19 has hit italy particularly hard um, I hope that your family is doing as well as can be. And um, I'm just wondering how, how the people you know and love in Italy are navigating at this difficult time. Yeah, well, thank you for asking. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's been, I, I will not lie, this has been, you know, a, a very um, anxiety <laughs> driven time for sure and uh, and being a part is not easy to begin with and certainly when something like this happens there's a lot of concerns and um, you know my father is uh, lives on his own and this is really not an easy time for him to be by himself um, but at the same time I will say on the positive side um, they are um, healthy and virus free um, you know, in, in isolation in different places, but also we're able to connect and, you know, technology has really played an important part to make sure that, you know, loneliness doesn't sink in too much. We, uh, we do talk every day and um, monitor the situation. It's, it's, um, it's, been, it's been very heavy over there, there's no question. And I think uh, Italians uh, have been very resilient and, and trying to follow the rules as best as they can. But it's been a long journey and we don't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. So, um, so hanging in there, but, but thank you for asking. And, and again, my, my family is, is healthy. And uh, so I'm very happy to report that. Well, I hope they stay healthy. Um, are there any special foods that you are making for the holiday that I know you can't always bring Italy here, but maybe uh, I know that you've shared with me some recipes. I know my family's going to be eating <laughs> some of your recipes this year, but Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the foods that you make um, in your family for the holiday. Yes, so I do. I do have a few things that that I do. I can I can tell you three. One, I think you showcased yesterday is the haroset, which is um, a super simple recipe, and that's you know what what I'm used to making, what my mom made all the time, uh, and it's just made of you know almonds. Um, blood oranges if you have them, but you can use any type of oranges and a little bit of sugar. So um, you don't have to cook anything. It's a very simple thing to do and maintain that tradition right now. The second thing, um, and it's a little controversial, I will put it out there, but I still make it, is that there's a, a specific cookie that we have been making in Rome for generations. They're called ciambellette. They're, they're cookies that are rounded and look a little bit like donuts. Um, and of course, there's, you know, specific ingredients and you have to do everything, you know, in under 18 minutes. And but it's something that we've been doing for so many years that we have it down to a science. So I did make those yesterday with my kids. Um, I am happy to report that we were done in less than nine minutes, which is, you know, a, a very good record on my part. <laughs> well, um, you're getting them done in less than 18 minutes for, to keep up the Passover rules, right? Exactly, exactly. But if you have enough hands in there, you can actually do it under 10, so you feel even better. Um, and they just, it's a taste from home for me. And I have to say, I gave it up for many, many years. 
because you know, the the it, it was uh, in Italy you have to use kosher flour which is flour but it's it's a type of flour that is just um, you know checked and and there's an extra um, I cannot find it here and so so for many years I didn't make them and then finally last year I decided I just I just needed it and it's a it's a comfort food for me and it was it was a moment where I needed it and then after and we have, a, we have a recipe year, on our website at globaljuice.org so if people want to make them and try them they're delicious and I highly recommend it I do too um, and then the last thing is we have these uh, tomatoes stuffed with rice that I am going to make tomorrow morning and that's a staple for Passover in Rome. Um, so again, that's another recipe that always brings me home. I make them all year round, but it's definitely something that um, cannot be missed during the Seder. That sounds wonderful. Well, I, um, how do you say happy Passover in Italian? You can say Buona Pasqua. Um, also just really buona, it's good, happy, and Pasqua is Passover or even Easter, really, um, or or Chag Sameach, <laughs> that works too. Well, you've been they, the the Jews of Italy, as you said, have been there since ancient ancient times, and so they speak Hebrew and Italian. Um, and, and there's also there's a specific dialect too to Roman Jews. It's called Judaico Romanesco. Is you know somewhat um, it, it is in the same vein of Yiddish, but instead of being a combination of Hebrew and German, it's a combination of Hebrew and Italian. Well, we'll have to have you back sometime mm -hmm. soon to talk about that and many more interesting things. Thank you so much. I wish you and your family health and happiness in this um, holiday season, and may we we only meet in person sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's been great.